Hi there, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium, back with another video blog for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Everything has gone crazy because it's been like summer here for the last two weeks since the last video. Uh, so let's have a look around today and see what's going on. Right, well firstly, a little bit of inconsequential nonsense about uh, Ultra HD or 4K. <laughs> I had a few queries on it. Right, if you are looking at the videos on a smart TV, it will need to obviously be a, a 4K TV. So you're not going to see it in all its real glory unless you are viewing on a 4K TV. Likewise, any laptop or iPad, whatever, tablet, um, it would need to have a 4K resolution in order to get it uh, very appropriately to its uh, proper Ultra HD uh, viewing. Um, the other thing is if you use a Mac desktop, um, you would need to use a browser other than the native Safari because Safari doesn't support YouTube videos more than 1080p. So um, there's a few things uh, that you just need to be aware of for uh, viewing in, uh, in 4K in all its uh, Ultra HD glory. Well, it's good to see you again. As I said, I'm going to try and do a few more videos now. Um, this one's just over a couple of weeks since the last one, so things are really, really beginning to move. Um, certainly since the last video, it's done nothing but be warm and sunny here in the southern part of the UK. And really everything has gone crazy with the growth. I would have thought in the just over two weeks since that last video, everything has probably doubled in size. Uh, my regals have gone absolutely bonkers. They're growing like crazy. Um, now the main thing is because of the warm weather, in this two week period we've had very warm weather. Last week it was very warm, uh, temperatures in the mid 20s centigrade, which is quite unusual for April. Uh, I'm filming this today on the 14th of April, Tuesday, day after Easter Monday. Um, and last week was very hot. It's cooled down slightly now, but it's still very clear and sunny. And the forecast, certainly up to this coming weekend, uh, is for it to be staying sunny. So um, it's things are really growing because, of course, the sun is really bashing through and, you know, stuff is very is growing very fast now. And I'm sure you've seen this in your greenhouses and gardens. Uh, certainly out in the garden, we could realistically do with some rain. So um, it's, although we've had a very wet autumn and winter, we could do with some rain in the garden. So that's something that we'll hopefully get. There's meant to be some coming this weekend, so we can but hope. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice is the fact that I've got the whitewash on. And anybody that looks at my YouTube account um, will realise a couple of um, last weekends or the weekend before the Easter weekend just gone, I put my whitewash on. Uh, and that's the main difference now. Good job I did do it because since then it's been nothing but clear sunny days every day so it's a good job i did do it because i think the plants would have been starting to suffer a bit and starting to get a bit of burnt leaf um, so we really don't want that it's very important to do if you've got a glass house that gets any element of sort of relatively lengthy sunshine during the summer plants will just literally fry in a greenhouse. Pelagoniums, although a lot of them have got roots from South Africa where it does get very dry and hot, um, they still need a bit of protection because the cultivated types uh, are very lush, very green, and they do want to be sort of protected from brilliant sunshine for any length of time. So it's very important that you, you know, you get the whitewash on your glass house. Just paint it on the outside. Uh, it's quite you know, relatively tough to withstand sort of heavy rain during the uh, during the summer um, and it's relatively easy to brush off uh, in the autumn uh, to let the light you know what remaining light we have in the winter to, to get through to your plants so that's important now the other thing of course your plants want now is feed and I've really upped the feed now um, 
I'm up to about two thirds strength in every watering and they are getting, the watering has had to go up. The watering has had to increase because the plants are growing so fast and it's been very warm. So they're really using up that moisture very quickly. Uh, so you really do need to keep an eye on your plants. Uh, just uh, fill up your know, saucer. After about an hour, any left, just chuck out. Uh, but certainly you don't want them sitting in it for any length of time. I always say about an hour, some growers say a bit less, but uh, I do it for about an hour, then chuck out any excess. Uh, but they are taking up a lot at the moment. Realistically, in terms of show, which incidentally we've still not made a decision about our national show yet, I'm actually using a balanced feed at the moment, and I will probably at some stage have to think about going over to a high potash feed. Now, one of the problems is because we can't get to garden centres and things like that, um, I've got to hope that I've got a bit of high potash feed left. Um, if not, I will probably just reduce down my balance feed, which is what I'm using at the moment, uh, to, you know, a feed that's very weak because I really don't want them to put on a lot of flesh. But I'm hopeful that I can find a little bit of stock somewhere of, say, a tomato food or something along those lines, just to give the, uh, the forming blooms inside a little bit of a boost. Right now I've got one or two early flowers um, coming through and uh, I think it's time now that I took the camera off and showed you around the greenhouse. Right, so up this end I've actually got a little bit of flower coming. Um, and here, look what we've got just coming out. It is the variegated Mr Wren. Um, now this is early bloom and something that you do need to remember with early bloom is that you may get some sort of minor deformities with it. It's because all of the plant's energy is going into growth and it's throwing a bit of energy, sort of a real blast of energy to get some early bloom going. And what you often find, if we have a look at this one, I'm going to just snap that off, is it's a bit malformed. But I think you can see in this case, hopefully that's going to focus, um, that it is more or less okay. It is Mr. Wren, but it's a little bit malformed. It's not fully, it's not got the real solid white part. If we look at this other one here, has got uh, the real good split beginning to come between the white and the sort of orange red. And I don't think we should worry too much about that. Uh, I think that will form okay um, once these other bloom heads come through. Uh, and I, I think that'll be fine. Uh, Right, now this big one over here is the plant Stad Burn. Um, I particularly love this plant. I potted it up. It was one of the big ones that was underneath. Uh, and I potted this up into an 8-inch pot. I really cut a lot of the root off, pared it down, and it's just beginning to really break strongly now. But I particularly like this vibrant, sort of bright, sort of reddy orange single blooms. Very unusual blooms that are very so vibrant and really stand out against this very, very dark green leaf. Now it is technically dwarfed by sort of standard growth terms, um, but this is quite overgrown and I intend to get a few cuttings from this in order to grow a plant on into a uh, Florabunda type. But you'll see here these dwarfs are growing really, really quickly. They are putting on so much growth. They've doubled in size. I mean, they are doing very well. There's a little bit of a uh, deformed sort of leaf here. That will be stripped off. But uh, the basic, well, the, I say they're basics. A lot of these are Florabundas, which are overgrown dwarfs, uh, these ones. Uh, and they are going to be, you know, they're, they're going to look really good. They're growing well. They've got quite a bit of size to put on them yet. Um, so I'm hopeful that they begin to really look good. They should be fine. They're growing strongly. As I say, we don't know whether they're going to be able to go to a show this year or not. My trained version, there is a trained version of the variegated form of Mr. Wren. Uh, and it has started to put on a, a fairly decent bit of growth now. Um, so that, that's got a lot of training to grow up. We'll see. I'm hopeful this summer that I can get it to the top of this uh, little trained part here. And hopefully it'll be okay. Um, I, if I get it to the top and can bash, break the middle up with some, uh, with some leaf, 
I, I'm hopeful that that'll look pretty decent. But I've got some younger versions, i.e. the flowering one, and I've got another one over there, uh, which, which I can hopefully use as trained plants as well. Well, now talking of blue, here's a double bloom. This is a bold snowflake, which is a uh, another dwarf plant. But this is a typical early bloom. This will be slightly deformed, and, but this is quite normal. Um, the early blooms on a number of plants, particularly doubles, can sometimes struggle. And, um, you know, they will, they'll hopefully come through. Certainly later blooms will come through very well. But I don't think these early ones are going to look too good. They'll look fairly shabby, but it's what normally happens. So don't worry too much about that. Yeah, so we can um, really begin to see here some really lovely um, zoned leaves coming. I mean, I'm hopeful that these are going to be pretty decent. I've only obviously seen them in really small guys, but um, I mean, that's got a lovely zoned leaf. Uh, that's a light pink. Uh, it's got a number. I know where it's come from. They've all come from Shrivenham um, Star, actually, but uh, that's got a, that's got a, a lovely zoned leaf. That one. Uh, it's going to be good to see them all growing as proper dwarfs in a what we call a standard four and a half inch uh, or twelve centimeter show pot. So be good to see them this year. As I say, I've got a number that that are in. Uh, the what are known as Floribunda size pots, which are all the ones along the back here. There are one or two basics, but uh, most of them are what we call Floribundas, which are overgrown dwarfs, basically. This is one angel that I'm growing. Um, that's not looking too bad, actually. Uh, I think it probably needs a water. It's relatively light, but it's getting quite a bushy growth. And the important thing to remember about angels is don't overfeed them. If you overfeed them, you get a lot of lanky growth. Uh, I feed that about once every three waters. So maybe once every 10 days it gets a feed. They generally, it's not getting anywhere near as much feed as all the other plants. Uh, and then we, we come on to my regals. And these are uh, doubled in size at least. I would say in the last couple of weeks, um, absolutely bonkers these plants are. They've doubled in size. I mean, they are huge. They're getting getting to a lovely size as well. I won't want these to be getting a, just a slightly scorched leaf in there, but um, I won't want these to be getting that much bigger. If we go over to the other side, um, there's the, the others, but they are looking... They were watered this morning, because again, these are being watered at least twice a week now. Um, and really, I will not want these to get much bigger. So I will be trying to hopefully get over to a high potash feed with these. That's a really good size, lovely plant, good dense growth. Um, the growth is denser on one or two others. That's a good one. That's a, again one of my seedlings. Um, this is a, I think this is Lilac Elaine, this particular plant. That's not looking too bad. So, still some gaps to be filled. Uh, but, you know, there's plenty of time. There's plenty of good growth still in here. Uh, no bloom coming on any of the regals yet, which is good to see. I mean, if we were to hold the show, it's just about two months, just a fraction less than two months, uh, 14th today. Show is scheduled for the 13th of June. Uh, but we're just going to have to see, of course, just to see how it works out. But um, if nothing else, I'll be able to have a show showing you people my plants, if nothing more. Uh, as we come through, um, something that I have done, I've potted on all these smaller Mrs. May lasts, which always do very well, a bicolour Stella with a hint of a, a pink in it as well. Um, I've potted all of these young plants up now to a 12 centimetre pot. I've got no problem with some of these younger dwarfs, which I'm not earmarking for show, to just flower away to provide a, a decent bit of, uh, of uh, colour in the glasshouse. Well, now this plant... Um, this is Jean Swansborough. I did post it on my on my Mr. Pelagonium Instagram page. This is a sister seedling of Shrivenham Star, which is actually, strangely, right next to it. This is a double 
pale pink double always done very well on the shows but this is a sister ceiling uh, a single version of it released them um, in 2014 in the last Gosbrook nursery catalogue uh, and this is a really nice plant I got hold of this plant from Jean herself who obviously kept it she's an aunt of the wife and I named it after her these Robin Louise standards um, I cut the sides off and they are shaping up much much better now they're going to be way too small I mean, the fact that I cut them back as well means that they're going to be stopped really for um, getting any flower on in terms of the shows uh, but by next year I'm hopeful that these will be a pretty decent size so I'm hopeful of that um, I said I think in the last video that I've got a couple of regal standards that I'm just vaguely having a go at one of the problems with regals is that all they want to do is bush so you often find that you have to train a side shoot that is growing off to the side this is a, a Gosbrook firecracker and this has got a side shoot but what you have to do try and get a side shoot which is more or less growing straight up through the main stem in terms of the length and if you look at that if we go to the side that is going to be fairly straight I took a side stem which was literally opposite to that one off that was growing a bit more out to the side and I knew that one was going to look comparatively straight from the straight stem that was going up it so I decided to keep that side uh, which I'm going to use as the main stem so I'm hopefully going to get some length on it right now underneath we can see these plants these older plants just beginning to break through there is a dead stem there actually which I will cut off it's not going to make any difference they're fine they're being watered and they're just beginning to grow I've got a really big copthorn here which is absolutely superb for uh, growing outside because it's so strong growing um, these were pot this was two smaller plants that I had that I've potted up into a big tub they're just ready to grow on okay well that's just about it from me today um, I hope you've enjoyed this little look around the um, my glass house um, I'll hopefully be back in a couple of weeks gradually of course we will get a bit more uh, bloom coming out and I, I we'll get to see some of the plants and now they continue to grow through the spring so thanks for watching and we'll see you again very soon. Please subscribe to this channel and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can follow Mr. Pelagonium on both Twitter and Instagram under Mr. Pelagonium and you can follow the Pelagonium and Geranium Society on Facebook or you can visit the PAGS website at thepags.org.uk.